Hey there, Will Gibbons here, and today I wanted to do something really different than the traditional Keyshot rendering tutorials that I typically produce on this channel. Today I'm going to be using Google as a search engine to pull up frequently asked questions that I will answer related to Keyshot. So if you're new here, I do normally create Keyshot tutorials for rendering and animation. So here we are on Google's homepage. I've got an incognito tab open. It should not be using any sort of search history or anything related to me to influence these searches. So for example, when you click in the Google search box, you get suggestions. And if you type a keyword like, I don't know, GameStop, uh, you're going to see relevant search terms that people will have searched, right? So the idea is to use Keyshot as a search term and answer whatever questions Google suggests people are searching. So to keep things simple, I'll begin with is Keyshot, and there we go, we have our first list of questions. So the first one is Keyshot free. And the short answer is no. Keyshot comes in a number of tiers. It is, I think, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, and $4,000 depending on what license you buy. You've got Keyshot HD, Keyshot Pro, Keyshot uh, floating, I think, and Keyshot Enterprise. Those are the big tiers. So Keyshot HD, basic version of Keyshot with some of the features missing, that starts at uh, $1,000. Keyshot Pro, which is what I use and quite a few professionals use, $2,000. If you need a license to float between multiple machines, this is what's used in studios and large companies usually. That's Keyshot uh, floating for $3,000 per license, I think. And then Enterprise, $4,000. That comes with Perks like some network rendering and uh, floating license as well, I'm pretty sure. And then they have a couple add-ons too, like web and VR type stuff, uh, depending on what you need. There also is a student rate, I believe. Uh, don't quote me, I wanna say it's around $95, so incredibly affordable. I think it's the equivalent of somewhere between HD and Pro. There may be some restrictions on it, I don't know. Um, so that leads us into the next question. Is Keyshot free for students? And I, I think I answered that. It's not free, uh, but I think Luxian does a really good job of making it affordable for students. So next, is Keyshot worth it? Hmm. I don't really, I mean, I make a living using it. Is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, if I didn't own it, I'm not sure what I'd be doing right now with my time. Um, I spend money on Keyshot. I think it's a very fairly priced software for how much value it brings me. Um, is it worth it? I mean, it makes my job easy. It allows me to pay the bills. I enjoy doing it. It produces nice renderings. Uh, it serves a niche where it allows you to bring in CAD data and work with it, uh, NURBS data really well, whereas other rendering engines don't. So. Yeah, is it worth it? Yeah, it's it's fairly uniquely positioned and um, it does the job pretty well. So I think it's worth it. Is Keyshot CPU or GPU? The answer is yes. It used to be CPU-based rendering only. Nowadays, Keyshot is taking advantage of NVIDIA GPUs, uh, specifically the RTX cards, if you have those. Um, the newer cards, they just keep getting better and better and faster. Uh, one thing to consider, Keyshot's implementation of GPU rendering is gonna take a little while to catch up to CPU rendering, and I mean that from a feature set, not necessarily from a quality standpoint. If you want to get the fastest render times on Keyshot, you're probably gonna get them with a graphics card, a GPU. But if you have some very specific needs, like matching certain appearances and materials for older materials like translucence and some of the more complex materials, when you switch from CPU to GPU mode, you're likely to see a bit of a shift in those appearances. Another downside to GPU is the uh, limit of VRAM. Uh, I don't wanna get too deep into this, but basically there's a limit as to how much information can be held in memory when rendering on a GPU. So uh, high res textures and bigger scenes eat up VRAM pretty quickly and that may prevent you from rendering on your GPU. All right, next question, is Keyshot good? Is Keyshot animation free? So. Uh, again, we've gone over this, Keyshot's not free, but the ability to animate might only be in the Keyshot Pro level and above. I don't think Keyshot HD supports animation. Is Keyshot a one-time payment? Uh, unless they're in the process of changing this right now, as far as I know, Keyshot has always been a one-time purchase, 
and you are not on a subscription plan, it is up to you to upgrade your plan year to year. And uh, the way you can do this, if you're an ongoing Keyshot customer, you can pay what's called a maintenance fee. And that means every year you'll get the latest version. If you pay a maintenance fee, which I think is, I don't know, maybe 400-ish dollars per license. So it's cheaper than upgrading fully every single year, if that makes sense. Is Keyshot easy to use? Yes, it is. I think comparative to most rendering software, Keyshot's gonna be one of the simplest options you have out there. Okay, time for round number two. How to Keyshot, right? So I'm hoping we're gonna have some more interesting questions here, not just about pricing. All right, so the first few are how to use Keyshot, how to render in Keyshot, and how to animate in Keyshot. This is probably as good a time as any to plug my brand new Keyshot rendering masterclass. Uh, it's pretty in-depth. It's got over 15 hours of content, uh, over 100 video modules. I include all the project files, a bunch of project-based lessons. It's pretty rad. Everyone who's taken it has been very pleased with it. I'll drop a link below. Check it out if you want to go and take your skills, whether they're absolute beginner or even somewhere in the middle, all the way up to a working level of competency that I would expect somebody who I was paying to use the software to have, okay? Uh, also, I should say it doesn't deal with animation, so hold off on that. I will have a course out later on animation. Stay tuned for that. Okay, so how to download Keyshot for free? Don't do it. Uh, how to add lights in Keyshot? We'll show you. I mean, it's pretty simple. You can either use the built-in HDRI, but I assume this question is related to physical lights. Uh, I have several videos on lighting. I'll link those if needed. But generally speaking, you want to add a piece of geometry. You can do this with control or command, and then one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, on your uh, number pad. So by doing so, you will add a primitive in Keyshot, and then you can drag a material that is a light type material onto it, such as an area light or an emissive or a spotlight or an IES light, uh, feel free to um, give those a shot. Okay, so how do we render without a background and key shot? There's two real things that you need to make sure you do in order to do this. Uh, when you render with either your HDRI visible or a ground plane with a ground material on it, and a solid color background. And then you use a PNG file format as your image format, check the include alpha transparency checkbox. If you do those items, you will get an image that has transparent pixels behind your product. Now, as soon as you add a physical plane with a material that you cannot see through, or if you have other geometry behind your object in your scene, in order to separate your object from it, you would need to use something like render layers, render passes, something like that. Uh, to, to achieve that. So how do you update a model in Keyshot? This is a little bit tricky. So depending on what software you're using for your 3D modeling, Keyshot may have a free plugin available. When you download and install a free plugin, it installs a, a couple of buttons within your 3D modeling software. And when you click on one of those buttons, it will give you options to either send your model into Keyshot or perhaps save a file out for Keyshot. And sometimes it will allow you to update your model that's already been pushed into Keyshot. This is called live linking. And exactly how each software handles this and to what extent it works is highly dependent and unique on each software that you're using, if that makes sense. So uh, one thing I will note, if you make changes to the number of bodies or uh, the names of different parts, and then you go and update them uh, or try to push the live link into Keyshot after that, it tends to have issues. My past experiences tell me uh, that you're going to see this feature work most likely as long as you are only making things like dimensional changes, like how long a part is, maybe changing the shape of a fillet or moving a face around. But when you start adding new bodies, new parts and things like that, and you say update, it doesn't know what to do and sometimes you'll get some weird behavior. So. Um, I like to use updates if you're just doing slight iterative changes, but if you're bringing in a model that has very different features or a number of bodies and faces and things like that, you may be better off just re-importing the model. Time for round three. Let's see what we can find next. Can Keyshot blank, okay? Can you model in Keyshot? The short answer is no, Keyshot's not a modeling application. It's a standalone render engine, that is it. However, 
Keyshot has the ability to add primitives. Primitives are like a simple shape or an object, like a ground plane or a sphere or a cone or a, uh, I don't know, a rounded cube, a cylinder, things like that. So you can add those as uh, various shapes that you usually apply light materials to, or sometimes you use them to situate your models on to add some backgrounds and walls and stuff, but that's pretty much it. Ah, here's an interesting one. Can you mirror in Keyshot? And the answer is technically yes. You can mirror something in Keyshot if you go to the object selected in the scene tree, go down to the scaling options, and type a negative value in either the X or Y, and keep that value the same as it was. So example, if you had one, type in negative one, and it should mirror or flip that object. Bet you didn't know that. Does Keyshot work on a Mac? Yes, it does. It works very well natively on a Mac, as well as a PC. Does ZBrush come with Keyshot? No, it doesn't. But Keyshot does have a Keyshot for ZBrush license, which I think is maybe an add-on. I'm not entirely sure, but beware. It is a, how do you say, kind of a basic version, an abridged version. It's not a fully featured version. So Keyshot for ZBrush is not the same as like, say, Keyshot Pro standalone. What about searching for why? Why are my Keyshot renders grainy? Well, that's a pretty good question. This has to do with your render settings. If you don't let something render long enough, it's still gonna be grainy and the graininess goes away. Usually the longer Keyshot spends rendering your image, how long it will take to not be grainy is dependent on the complexity of the file, the resolution of your Keyshot scene that you're rendering, um, the speed of your hardware, how you know beefy your computer is, there's a lot of things that factor how long it will take, but it generally is grainy because you have not allowed for enough samples. The more samples you render, the more times the image is sampled, as it were, the more resolved Keyshot is. And you can help speed this along by using denoising, which is a fairly new feature within Keyshot. You'll find it under the image tab, uh, but yeah. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully you learned something new. I realize for those who've been using Keyshot for a long time, this may be a little bit basic, but for those of you who haven't taken the plunge or maybe haven't heard of Keyshot or are just curious and wanna get into rendering, perhaps this will be of use to you. Until next time, happy rendering.